Good afternoon, guys. What if your life were a recipe? What if your life were a recipe? Psalm 40 says this. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and He turned to me, and He heard my cry for help. He brought me up from the desolate pit, out of the muddy clay, and set my feet on a rock, making my steps secure. This psalm is written after somebody had been through something and God had delivered them. God had brought them out and set them on something solid. He goes on to say, He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear, and they will trust in the Lord. How happy is anyone who has put his trust in the Lord and has not turned to the proud or to those who run after lies. Lord my God, you have done many things, your wondrous works and your plans for us. None can compare with you. If I were to, if I were to report and speak of them, they are more than can be told. That's Psalms 40, verses 1 through 5. The writer is speaking from the end of a difficult thing. He's speaking from the completion. He's already been through it. He's talking about waiting patiently on God. He's talking about how God delivered him. How he trusts God and God picked him up and set him on something solid. In all that time and all his struggle, he just waited. He might not have understood what he was going through or couldn't put into words what he was supposed to be doing. All he knew was that he had to trust. You know, because of this, he learned from this experience a whole new thing about God. A whole new way of seeing God because he'd been through something. You know, and it's easy to say that something uh, that is bad when you're going through it, something's bad because it doesn't feel good. It's easy to say that. It's easy to say that the stuff that does feel good is automatically good for you. But we know that that's not the case. Stuff that doesn't feel good isn't necessarily bad. And stuff that feels good isn't necessarily good. Psalm 40 helps you make that distinction. From the end of an experience, you can look back and say, I learned who God was, and I learned how to trust. And what He was going to do, I couldn't tell. I was in a desolate place, a place where there was no one. I was stuck in that place. It was muddy and miry muck. But God lifted me out. So I ask you, what if your life was a recipe? And I ask you this also. At the end of this COVID-19 experience, when somebody asks you, what did you learn? What will you say? Now, we all know that the answer that comes to our minds first is that we need our people. That's automatic for us but look, think a little bit deeper than that go a little bit further into your mind and heart and when somebody asks you what have you learned what will you say before i go any further i want you to answer this to yourself so that you can remember at the end because we're going to come back to maybe what what you answer think about it what are you going to say when somebody asks you what you learned think about this also, the answer you might give right now is not the answer that you're going to give somebody 10 or 20 years from now when they say, what did you learn from going through that? Because time and experience is going to season you and give you wisdom in order to understand better what it was that God was trying to show you. But what if you could get there now? Or at least what if you could get on the road to understanding that now? I believe you can. I believe our God is that good. I believe if you pray and ask God to help you understand now why you are where you are, why what's going on is happening, that you will be like the psalmist in Psalm 40. And at the very least, you'll learn how to experience God and trust Him even more. So, What if after you come to the end of this desolate and muddy situation, God leads you to something pretty cool? Here's what I mean. About two years ago, I started cooking Cliff Bar cookies. 
right? And that first recipe I got and, and began to, to make, the one that I use now looks nothing like that recipe. I learned over time what went together and what didn't. I learned what I liked and what I didn't like. I learned because I was trying to make something a little bit healthy, then not everything that's good, that tastes good, is good for you. And you just can't put it in there because it tastes good. See, that recipe has changed over time because I learned. Like that recipe right now, you're working on your own batch of something. Let's call it your life's recipe. Your life cookies two months ago were a completely different recipe than they are today. They had different things in it. They had different people and different activities. You did different things. It was a combination of, of a whole different life that made your life cookies, your life recipe, then. And it's completely different now. That recipe's changed. Some things have been added, and many things have been taken away. When this thing is over, you must remember what has come into your life that is good for you. It may not feel good, but what has come into your life because of this experience that is good for you? And what's been taken out of your life that might have felt good, but you know inside your heart of hearts wasn't necessarily good for you? If you're honest, some of those things that you like that aren't in your life right now, you don't need to put back. If you're honest, some of those things um, that you don't like right now, you need to keep. Here's what I learned, and it's going to sound like a really Pastor Adam moment when you hear this whole thing play out. You're going to say, really, man, you didn't know that? But listen, I learned that life and what you do in it, if you put the gospel in it, changes everything. Now, there ain't a whole lot of evangelism going on right now. Because of social distancing and the, the uh, we can't go and, and meet and talk to people and get together. Nobody's anywhere. But what if you put the gospel in your life? When you do, it's going to change how you see it. About six months ago, Betsy and I decided that we were going to plant a little Christmas tree farm at our home. We wanted to um, do this so that uh, Dean and Beth could learn and we could have a little bit of fun. At the very end of planting 205 Christmas trees this spring, at like tree 198, I called Dean and Beth over and did one of those dad things to them. I called them over and they were exhausted and they were tired after you know two weeks of planting Christmas trees. And I said, look, have you thought about what these trees might be to someone else five or six years from now? Because five or six years from now, they're going to be somebody else's Christmas tree. And they kind of looked at me, and I told them, I just realized, and I had, I just realized on like tree 198 of 205, this. I realized that this little tree that I was putting in the ground is going to eventually be in someone else's home. It's going to be uh, a part of someone else's memories. It's going to have presents and lights on it and decorations, handmade ornaments. It's going to be a part of their memory. It's going to be someone else's Christmas memory. Those people or be, are going to be people if we do our jobs right as a family. Remember, I'm talking to Dean and Beth. Those people, if we do our jobs right, are going to be people that because they came here and got a Christmas tree, or heard the gospel. Those people might be people who went home with their tree. They put their lights and decorations on it, and maybe they read the Christmas story. And this tree would be the background in their memory when they heard that Christ was born, and they heard in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over with flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were so afraid. 
This tree might be a part of that memory. And that's pretty special. When you think about it like that. Maybe this little 12 inch stick that we're looking at today. So tired and exhausted for planting his 197 friends. Would be that. It don't look like much today. But in time, it will be. But in order to get there, we must do our jobs between now and then. We must take away the things that are bad for this little tree. And then we must put into this little tree the things that are good. So that it's possible for this little tree to grow up and be as strong as it can be. So that it can one day be a part of somebody else's Christmas. When the time comes and someone asks you to have this tree, make sure you tell them that tree number 198, this one right here, we thought about you when we planted this one. It's pretty cool, right? And then we'll ask them if they know Jesus. See, at tree 198, I figured out how to put the gospel into what we were doing. Now, I was a little bit late. But from then... So the time we, you know, start uh, giving these trees to others, I'll have this. And I'll know that if you put the gospel in something, if you add it as a part of your life's recipe, then there comes with it this new determination and power. So, what did I learn? I learned that what God could do if you look at the end from the beginning. If the gospel is the why, then it becomes really special. We began this Christmas tree thing with Dean and Beth and Mott, hoping that they would learn how to work hard and, and hoping that they would learn what my dad taught me planting trees. He planted like 500 this year. But the real end God had in mind hit me like a ton of bricks. When he put into my heart that planting these trees was something that I might be able to use to tell other people about Jesus. It might be a part of something really special in their life. So that's what I mean. And what does that mean to you? It means take a good hard look, a good long look, at what God's doing in your life right now, at your life's recipe. What's God changed about it? What's he brought into it that you need to keep? What's he taking away that you don't ever need to go anywhere near again? Think about what God could do if you started sharing the gospel as your goal. Remember, I told you that a different determination happens when that's your end. A different power is behind that motivation. It's the Holy Spirit of God. When this is all said and done, there are going to be parts of your recipe that you need to keep and parts that you need to change. Now think about your answer before. When I ask you, what if somebody came up to you and said, what have you learned from this COVID-19 thing? Think about what you would have said. Now, think real hard about what you might say. If your life's recipe is changing and God's taking in and put into your life different things and it's for your good, keep it. Tell others. Why? Above all else, tell them about Jesus. As always, we love you, we think about you, we're praying for you, we can't wait to see you. If you need anything, let us know. God bless you.